Okay, uh, next up in our lightning round, we have Kathy Wilson of Adult Services at the Oregon Public Library District uh, talking about passports in your library. Take it away. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kathy Wilson. Uh, I work at the Oregon Public Library District in Oregon, Illinois. We get a lot of phone calls for Oregon, Wisconsin recently. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, we started doing passports in our library in about 2009, and um, we kind of fell into it because the local post office and where the county seats or the local um, county clerk did not want to do it anymore. So it was a service that was needed in our area. No one in, within probably 20 miles from here uh, is a passport agent, so uh, we are. Uh, it does bring in more people, and it brings in business owners, which we were having a, a hard time um, bringing in, and um, underserved people that wanted to get passports. Um, it's another income stream. It's $25 per applicant, but the uh, postage does come out of that, which is right now $5.75. If you can get a few of them together, it goes down. Uh, it helps to demonstrate our library's value to the community. Showing um, the driver's license is part of the application process. So um, when you see the driver's license and you see that they live in Oregon, Illinois, you can ask them if they have a library card. And uh, if they don't suggest that they get a library card. So we have had several people sign up for library cards while they were here. And part of the training is to help you prevent child trafficking. And to me, this is, this is uh, kind of hits home that I really think that in this area, when we first started, a woman came and tried to get passports for children, and it was iffy because the children weren't sure of their names. So um, by doing that, we feel like we, you know, we kind of helped to keep maybe some children from going into slavery, which was a really big thing. Okay, how to start? Um, if you contact your regional passport center, and that might be tricky to find um, to become a passport accepting facility. You may be able to contact them through your local post office if your local post office isn't doing it. Or um, there, there's a website called travel.state.gov, G-O-V, and um, they, you might be able to find it there. It's your government, so it's a little bit tricky finding things. Uh, about a month after we um, contacted them, we could start training. Now, we did all our training online. We're uh, about 90 miles west of Chicago. And we did not want to go to Chicago for the training. So we did all the training. It's 28 modules. took about five hours to complete the training the first time. You do need to do yearly training, retraining, and recertification, but it takes a lot less time now. Um, you need to find, you would need to find out, and you just need to find out where you could get a passport picture taken. And we did find out that Walmart and Walgreens did it with varying degrees of accuracy. I had one yesterday that was from Walmart, and it said passport photo on it, and it was not compliant. The State Department is very picky about exactly how the photograph is supposed to look. Uh, luckily, about a block away from us, we have a newspaper that will do it, um, too. So that, that helps a lot. Um, you need to have a locked door to keep the completed applications in, and you need to have a secure place for the form, for the passport agent reference guide, and for your mail-in supplies. Okay, what does the work look like? Um, we decided to only take appointments and not to have walk-ins. The main reason for that is there's only, when we started there was only myself and now one other person is trained. And since everybody here is part-time, we weren't in all the time. So that's what we tell people. Make an appointment because you might walk in and nobody can help you. Uh, and that has worked out pretty well because any staff worker can set up an appointment but we try and pre-qualify them before they walk in. So they're not walking in, say, um, trying to pay with a, a credit card, because we can't pay credit cards, or uh, walking in with the wrong birth certificate from uh, the hospital instead of the official birth certificate from the county or from the state. Um, if they, they have more questions than the uh, staff person who takes the appointment feels comfortable with, we will have um, one of the agents call that person before their appointment to make sure that they understand what's going on, and things can go, can go well. Um, again, the website travel.state.gov is a good resource for the hopeful applicants and for their forms. They can actually get the form there. We keep the forms here. We're required to keep several forms here. 
and uh, we can hand them out to people, but they can also go to travel.state.gov and print them off. And actually, there's, uh, I think, an app there that will help them to print it right onto the form. The application process itself, uh, from the time they get here till, you know, we're satisfied that we know who they are and that everything, you know, they've paid their money and everything, it takes around 15 to 20 minutes. It can take more, especially if there are children involved. So um, it's kind of fun, though, because you, you get to be a little bit nosy. You're supposed to be a little bit nosy and ask people where they're going and kind of watch their reactions about what's going on. So, um, you know, it's not like everyday library work where you're trying to be, you know, as detached and non-nosy as possible. So it's a little bit fun that way. Um, once or twice a year, there is something they call Passport Day in the USA, and it's nationally advertised um, uh, event. And often we will relocate to another library for that. Um, there's a library about 10 miles away from here, and they have lost their post office as being a passport agent. So we go there. We do have to get permission from our regional agent to do that, but uh, they've, been, they've been good about that. Uh, so that's kind of a fun thing, and it's, it's kind of like a lightning round because we do 20 or 30 of them in a day, whereas right now we're doing about 20 or 30 of them a month. Uh, the drawbacks to it, it, it does take time to train, and uh, the appointments take time out of the day, and to take you know the, the envelope to the post office um, all takes some time. Um, training the other staff to pre-qualify, and um, we have a, a, a cheat sheet posted so that they can look at it to find out what questions they need to ask. And there's a lot to remember. When you first start, it really helps if you have a mentor, someone that you can call. Um, Passport customer service now, as opposed to in 2009, is a lot better at answering our calls than our Chicago one is. Um, there are uh, regional agents all over the country. so. Um, you can call your local one and, and ask questions. Um, you know, it's kind of awkward to do that in the middle of an appointment, but sometimes it happens. Um, that's about all I have. Do we have some questions? Um, all right. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, looks like we do have a question from the audience. They're asking, about how many passports do you do in a year? Um, like I said, about 20 or 30 a month, so whatever that turns out to be. Well, 25 a month mm -hmm. would be it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, what, uh, 300 a year? Yep. Um, and I'm gonna... Yeah, probably around there. And you got to realize it's, we, we do make $25 off of each one less postage. Oh, okay. So, and, and I'm going to ask a quick question, too. Um, do they have to bring their own photo, or do you take photos on site? We, we decided not to do photos. Um, we're a very crowded library. We're in 1909. Carnegie Library, so we're, um, we don't have a place to do it here, but we do have a place uh, a block from here that will do it. Okay, great. Thank you very much.